Hello everyone, welcome back to our chemistry class. So we are now in chapter 6, chemical equilibrium. So in this chapter, we have three subtopics. The first one is dynamic equilibrium, second one equilibrium constant, and the third one is Le Chatelier principle. And this video is about 6.1 dynamic equilibrium. So actually, there are two types of reaction in chemistry. The first one is non-reversible reaction, and then the second one is the reversible reaction. So let's take a look at non-reversible reaction first. As we know, most chemical reaction proceed to completion, and the reaction will continue until one of the reactants is completely used up. Therefore, the reaction will stop. Uh, in non-reversible reaction, the reaction will take place in one direction. Okay, one direction sama ada di sebelah, dia akan menuju ke sebelah kanan sahaja. So, sebagai contohnya, kita ada A plus B will produce C plus G. Okay, A plus B ini adalah reaktan dan bila reaktan ini habis diguna pakai, tindak balas ini akan berhenti dan ianya akan menghasilkan C plus D. Dan tindak balas ini cuma berlaku satu arah daripada kiri ke sebelah kanan. Okay, so seterusnya mari kita tengok contoh. Okay, tindak balas di antara HCl dan juga NaOH. The reaction will stop. Okay, when HCl or NaOH is completely used up, depending which one of them is the limiting reactant. So, we are not interested in non-reversible reaction. Untuk topik ini, kita lebih berminat dengan reversible reaction. So, actually, many other reactions do not proceed to completion. Kamu kena ingat ini. Sebabnya kenapa? Bukan semua reaktan, not all reactants are changed to product because the product can dissociate to form reactants again. Maksudnya begini, kita sudah hasilkan produk and then produk ini dia akan terurai, dissociate. Okay, dissociate to form the reactants again. So, dalam erti kata lain, in reversible reaction, the reaction will take place in both direction. Apa maksudnya ini? So, katalah kita ada A okay, yang akan menghasilkan B. A adalah reaktan dan B adalah produk. So, the reaction, okay, the reaction will proceed from the left to the right. This is what we call as forward reaction. And the reaction also can proceed from the right to the left. And this is what we call as the reverse reaction. Okay? Jadi, chemical reaction that takes place in forward and reverse direction, we call it as the reversible reaction. And the reversible reaction is indicated by the sign of the arrow. So, kamu tengok anak panah yang berada dalam bulatan berwarna kuning itu. So, itu adalah tanda untuk reversible reaction. So, mari kita tengok nombor tujuh example. Okay, ini sebenarnya adalah proses Haber, Haber proses, Haber proses. Sorry. So, in a reverse reaction, initially the reaction will proceed towards the formation of products. Dalam arti kata lain, dia adalah forward reaction daripada kiri ke kanan menghasilkan NH3. Okay, and as soon as some of the product molecule is formed, the reverse process begins to take place. Okay, jadi NH3 ini dia akan terurai. Okay, terurai untuk menghasilkan gas nitrogen dan juga gas hydrogen. Okay, jadi ini apa yang kita panggil sebagai reversible reaction. So next, consider we have the following reversible reaction. So if we plot the change of concentration over time for the above reaction, we can observe the following graph. Okay, daripada graph ini kita akan lihat over time, okay, over time, the concentration of A will decrease and then the concentration of B will increase. Okay, and then selepas di one kita akan nampak di sana concentration of A and B will not change. So ini apa yang kita panggil sebagai equilibrium. So apa yang dimaksudkan dengan equilibrium? 
So actually, equilibrium is a state in which there are no observable changes as time goes by. Maksudnya tiada lagi apa-apa perubahan daripada segi concentration dengan masa. Dan ianya cuma boleh berlaku di dalam closed system. And there are two types of equilibrium. The first one is physical equilibrium and then the second one is chemical equilibrium. So physical equilibrium only involves physical changes and the chemical composition does not change. So for an example, uh, evaporation of water in closed system, evaporation of bromine in closed system and also sublimation of iodine in a closed system. So mari kita tengok contoh physical equilibrium. So the flask contain water and is in a closed system. Therefore, matter cannot escape from the flask. Okay. So the water in the flask will evaporate and the water vapor in the flask will condensate. Therefore, the rate of evaporation will be equal to the rate of condensation. Ini yang kita cakap sistem itu berada dalam keadaan equilibrium. Therefore, the liquid level remains constant. No chemical reaction occur because only changes in physical state happens in the flask. So in this chapter, we also not interested in physical equilibrium. So let's talk about chemical equilibrium. So chemical equilibrium is a reversible reaction where both reactants and products are present in concentration which no further tendency to change with time. So there is no observable change in the properties of the system. Okay, this step results when the forward reaction proceeds at the same rate of the reverse reaction. So chemical equilibrium also known as the dynamic equilibrium. So let's take a few example. Okay, we are looking at the decomposition of N2O4. So N2O4 is a gas and it will decompose to form NO2. Okay, so a change occurs immediately when N2O4 in liquid were put in a sealed flask. The liquid N2O4 will vaporize and the gas begins to turn pale brown. The color, okay, as you can see, the color will slowly darken, but after a while, no further color change can be seen. Okay, this is when the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of reverse reaction. So, actually, in a reversible reaction, both forward and reverse reaction continue indefinitely even though equilibrium has established. Okay, therefore, chemical equilibrium is a dynamic process. Reactant and product concentration stop changing because the forward and reverse rates become equal. Okay, so let's take a look at the characteristic of a system in equilibria. So actually at equilibrium, the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of reverse reaction. Okay, the second one, the concentration of N2O4 and NO2 remain constant at equilibrium. Tapi kena ingat, concentration dia adalah constant. Tidak bermaksud concentration untuk N2O4 dan NO2 adalah sama. Okay, so as a summary of characteristics of system in equilibria, the first one is the concentration of the reactants and the products are constant over time. The second one, the rate of forward reaction will be equal to the rate of reverse reaction. And then the third one is the reaction quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant Q equals to K. And must remember that equilibrium can only occur in closed system. Okay, let's take a look at these three different graphs to show the characteristic of system in equilibria. Okay, we have three types of cases here in which each case 
will start with different reactant. Okay, so as we can see, biarpun dia start dengan different reactant, okay, ketiga-tiga case ini dia akan achieve equilibrium over time. Tapi kamu kena tahu bahawasanya, biarpun ketiga-tiga case ini will reach equilibrium, the concentration of NO2 and also N2O4 will not be the same. So let us continue to the law of chemical equilibrium, also known as the law of mass action. This law states that for any equilibrium at a given temperature, the product of the concentration of product each raised to a power of it equals to its coefficient in the chemical equation divided by the product of the concentration of product each raised to a power equal to its coefficient in the chemical equation will be a constant. For a particular system and temperature, the same equilibrium state is attained regardless of how the reaction is run. Okay, yang panjang-panjang kita baca dari itu sebenarnya dia begini je, dia simple je. So, A dengan B dalam kes ini adalah reactant dan C dan D adalah product. So, apa yang law of mass action cakap? Apabila concentration C kita kuasakan dengan dia punya coefficient kuasa C, kita darabkan dengan concentration D kuasa coefficient dia D. Dan kita bahagikan, okay, concentration A kuasa A darab dengan concentration B kuasa B. So ini adalah sama dengan apa yang kita panggil sebagai suatu constant, okay? Yang mana kita akan simbolkan dia sebagai K, K itu kita panggil sebagai equilibrium constant. So ini adalah secara ringkasnya apa yang law of mass action kata. Okey, mari kita tengok satu contoh untuk menulis constant equilibrium constant. So kita diberikan persamaan di sana. So yang di sebelah kiri adalah reactant, sebelah kanan adalah produk. So at equilibrium, okay, K is equals to the concentration of SO3 power of two divided by concentration of SO2 power two times with concentration of O2. So that's all for this video. We will we will continue in the next video discussing about the equilibrium constant. See you and bye bye.